G'day, I'm Scott. Today, I thought I'd run you through a couple of simple tips to help you um, have more success with your fishing. So, um, I'll start number one now while I'm motoring. Uh, by the way, the conditions aren't very nice out here today. It's a little bit lumpy and a bit terrible, but so be it. Number one tip, fish where the fish are. There's no point fishing if there's no fish in the area. So, when you get to where you're going, have a rough idea where you're going, get out there and then sound around. Spend five, 10 minutes doing a few circles and try to find yourself some bait. Um, bait on the sounder, you might see fish, but generally bait in the area is a good sign that the fish are gonna be there. So I'm just doing a few laps now. Sort of this is just the back edge of a piece of reef here. So I'm just zigzagging along that and I'm looking for bait. Um, I'll show you when I find it. I'm up on top of the reef here at the moment, sort of drop it off the back. Okay, so this little bit of fluff here, that'll be bait. It's not a huge amount. I'll probably want more than that but I'll circle back around and have another look and see if I can find some more than that. Um, yeah, always find some bait or find some fish or find some heavy fish holding structure. Don't just fish in the middle of a desert because you're not gonna catch anything. Okay, here we are, we're starting to see some bait here now. See this holding midwater, some midwater bait, that's always helpful. You can see this is a spot to I've been to before. Um, the only reason this was a spot before was for exactly that reason, it was holding bait last time I came here. I marked a big school of bait, bang, I marked it on the GPS so I knew where it was, came back around, circled around, couldn't find anything better, went back to that bit of bait and fished on that piece of bait. So same thing again today. There's a little school, it's not a huge amount, but it doesn't have to be. There just needs to be some sort of signs of activity in the area. Anyway, I'm gonna turn around and see if I can get myself anchored up. So as I'm circling around, I'm finding more and more bait in the area. So there is definitely bait in the area. That's what I'm looking for. So now I'm just going to punch straight into the wind and then drop my anchor and then reverse back onto the bait with the um, anchor rope, just sort of let the wind blow me back on the anchor rope. All right, I'm just going to get my first bait out here. It's just a half a muley with a single hook through it there. You can see I've got good exposure for the, the tip of the hook. That's, uh, oh, it's not unweighted. There's a really tiny ball sinker. I don't know if you can see that there. A really small ball sinker on there just enough to I don't want it to plummet to the bottom but I do want it to get to the bottom at some stage so that's enough that it'll sort of with a current that's running it'll still sort of spend a lot of time dropping but it will actually find its way to the bottom so I'll toss that out once I think that's made it to the bottom I'll wind it back in and toss it back out again always want to keep that in the strike zone which is kind of mid-water just drifting along I've got here a trevally I caught last time I'm just going to pull some fillets off of this and then I'll stick the rest of the frame. Just some really rough fillets. The rest of the frame will go in the burly pot. And these fillets here I'll use a bit later on on one of my other rods here that drop to the bottom see how they go. So that frame will go on the burly pot down here. And I'll give that a bit of a crunch. Get some stinky fish goodness into the zone as well. Also over here, I've got some chicken pellets soaked in oil. So I'm just gonna put a couple of scoops of those out. Just every now and then, a couple of scoops of chicken pellets over the side. They drop to the bottom and leave a nice big oil slick like from the bottom coming up. This barely trail is basically from the top going down. That gives you a barely trail from the bottom coming up, which um, helps. So as you saw, I used half a muley. This other half, I'm gonna dice just into small cubes like that and that will also go into the into the water a bit of barely trial I've just got here so I'm just trying to make a name for myself announce to all the fish in the area hey I'm here come over here there's a free feed on the on the menu if you come over here I'm just gonna cut some nice fillets off of this skippy here Oh, I'm in already, look at that. Wow, so there you go, first bait. I only just got here. And it's fish on early. Oh, it's in the bottom, I don't like that. See, that barely hardly even had time to, that barely's hardly even had any time to work. It's just these rough stormy conditions. 
always fish well for snapper. This actually feels like a pretty solid fish. <laughs> yeah, these rough stormy conditions always fish well for snapper. Um, there's a big front coming through tomorrow. It's been stormy all week. It's been absolutely terrible conditions. Today is sort of like the first little mini break we've had for probably two weeks. And even now it's not ideal. It's still a bit chunky, but... Oh, yeah, this is a solid fish, I think. Yeah, solid fish. Oh. There you go. There you go. He's 70 centimeters. Perfect as a first little fish. 70 centimeter, that's a perfect eating size fish for me right there. I've been here, let me check the GoPro. Five minutes and five minutes I've been here. And there you go, first fish already. Too easy. Um, I'm gonna put this guy out of his misery, get him on ice, and I'll get some more barely and chuck another bait out. <laughs> All right. All right, well, I spiked him through the brain, slit his, slit his throat, and I've just got him in here where he, he can bleed out for five minutes. Once he's bled out a bit, I'll seek him on ice. And um, he is a perfect eating size fish. He will be my dinner, um, possibly tonight if I get back in time, which there's a pretty decent chance I might, but otherwise it'll be tomorrow night's dinner. Yeah, he's a perfect eating size. That's pretty much two meals for my family right there. Um, one side will be a meal and the other side will be another meal, so too easy. I'll flick this back out again. I didn't even get to do what I was hoping to do. But I was in the middle of cutting up these fillets of Trevally and um, that fish rudely interrupted me. So another tip, Another red hot tip. I mean, I know it, the bait didn't look like a huge amount today, but I did stand around a few loops and I saw a few isolated patches of bait like that. And that's all I need to see. You don't always need to see big groups of bait. You just need to know there's bait in the area. You need to know it's a solid chunk of reef and there is bait in the area. If you stand around and you see nothing and it looks barren, it probably is. So always look for bait. Tip number two, um, be versatile change it up i have got i've got that one out there unweighted up here uh, up here i've got a stick bait rigged up ready to go here which i'm just cutting up those fillets for i've got a bottom fishing i've got a snap bait here which will drop to the bottom with a weight ready to go i've got another another rod rigged up here with a single hook just like this one ready to go if that one busts off i've got one sitting there be prepared and be versatile, I've got all bases covered. If I see a bust up over here, some fish smashing the surface, my stick bait's ready. Bang, I can cast it out. I don't have to mess around trying to get stuff rigged up. It's ready to go and it's out. If I start seeing big arches on the bottom, wacko, down goes a snap bait. I'm ready to go. So be versatile, have a, have a few rigs ready. Have a bit of variety, ready to go. Because you just never know what's going to happen fishing is a strange thing some days it's predictable and other days um all sorts of strange stuff happens so you want to be ready for that so i'm whacking down this little snap bait here lately i've always been fishing for snapper like the traditional way with an unweighted bait like that drifting lately i've been playing with these snap baits and dropping them down and now i just won't go fishing without them if there was one thing i'd go fishing with every time it would be one of these um i just won't leave home without them now they're just so devastating you drop them to the bottom with a fillet like that and nine times out of ten they'll get slapped by something having said that i'll drop this to the bottom now and it probably won't see any action at all <laughs> because I've talked it up too much. Um, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna drop it out this side. I'll drop it out this corner here. All I do is just drop that, let that swing to the bottom. Once it gets to the bottom, wind it up a turn or two, and then I'll just let it hover there. And yeah, nine times out of 10, that gets smacked like, 
almost instantly. They don't have a very long shelf life on them. Fish just eat them up. Okay, so that's on the bottom. I can tell because the line's going slap. So I just wind it up a turn or two and I'm just gonna let that dance. That's all. I'll let that dance there. And I am very confident that something will slap that before too much longer. Make sure the barely keeps going. It's another little tip. I'll throw this one in for free. Barely. Have barely. Keep it going. Keep it steady. Keep it flowing. Oh, I could pretty much go home happy on that. One fish like that. I could pretty much go home happy. But since I made the effort to go out here and I bash my way out here in this slop, I'm going to stay a bit longer and see if I can't get something else off the bottom here. Now I can see that that bait is angling down there now and I reckon that's fallen to the bottom. I don't really want that on the bottom, I want that mid-water in the strike zone. This one's on the bottom, I want this one falling through the water column, um, all the way through the water column. So I'm going to wind this one back up again and I'll throw this one back out. But before I do, I'll show you something. So before I, I wind this up, and before I cast it back out, I'll give the old barely pot a pump. Give the barely pot a pump. Give a scoop of pellets. And I'll give that a few seconds just to sort of drift back a little bit. And then I'm gonna lob my bait right into the middle of that cloud of barely that I just put there. So my bait will be going down with that barely. So any fish that sniffs its way up the barely snap 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 on the little bits of morsel and then it finds my bait just sitting there in the middle of it almost too easy almost now I'll just kick back relax just keep one eye on those rods just watching those rod tips all the time Oh, something just gave that a tap there. Something's having a look. Oh, something had a good look. I reckon that might have just taken my bait there. Yeah, bait's gone. So there's definitely fish in the area. Oh, what's that? Whoa, something just followed that up then. Something just followed that. That might have been a kingfish, I think. Let me just quickly chuck this out. If that's a kingfish, this should get slapped in no time. I'll just flop that down there again and see what happens. Oh, hang on, now that's getting bit. That's getting some slapping down there too. Oh yeah, my fillet's getting a bit of a tap. Not the boy I'm after, the one I'm after. The big Jew fish will just eat that. He's not gonna mess around with it like that. Just check my bait on this. Snap bait, yeah, he's still got some bait on him. I'll drop him back down. Oh yeah, something's having another look at that one now. I reckon something's on that. Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Crikey. He wants to go this side. Okay. I can do that. Just adjust the camera. What do we got here? Yeah, decent fish. I'm just going to lock up on him a bit harder. I'm only on 20 pound tackle here, but I've got confidence in this. 
oh, I shouldn't say that because I'm just making them broad for my own back. I've got confidence in this line and I feel like my knot should be reasonably strong and I feel like this is definitely not a snapper. I'd really like him over the other side away from that line there if I can possibly arrange it. Let's go this way side buddy. Can you come this way for me? Uh, oh, he's gone. He just done me. He made it to the reef. I felt that grind and he is gone skis. Okay, what happened there? Yeah, my leader's still there and he's just chafed it, it's just chafed up. That's not cool, not cool at all. All right. Oh, wow, now I'm gonna have to change this whole leader because it's all chafed. Damn it. All right, I'll tell you what we're gonna do because I think that was a kingfish and I'm not very smart. I'm getting out the fly rod. I've got a little chartreuse fly here and I'm gonna just waft that out the back. Um, oh, this is just a recipe for disaster, but I've got a fish to eat, I'm happy with that. <laughs> so why not, let's have some fun. I'm gonna whack this little fly out the back. It's probably gonna take a bit to sink down. Um, this is a sinking line, but it's not a real fast sinking line, so it's probably gonna take a little while for this to waft down. Oh, I'm already got tangles up all over the boat. Oh, I've got tangles everywhere. I'm not even gonna to attempt to cast this. My fly's already there and it's already sinking down. It's in the barely where it needs to be. I'm just gonna let that waft down with all that barely. And that should be all it takes really. If there's kingfish or Samson fish down there, that should be enough. <laughs> this is absolutely, this is stupidity. I know it's stupidity, but hey, you gotta try something different once in a while. I'm totally undergunned with this fly rod. It's only like a seven weight fly rod. Probably more suited to trout and the like, but anyway, you only live once. Let's give it a crack. It's gotta let this waft down a bit. Once I feel like it's gone down, I'll start strip, 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 and stripping it back towards myself. I'll just feed it more line. Oh, I'll hang on a minute over here now. Oh, is that in or not? Something just pants that. Yeah, I can't leave this out here because this will just be disastrous. I can't put this in a rod holder. This rod's in. What do we got here? Hopefully this is the target. I really wanted a nice dew fish, if that's a possibility. Ah, uh, it's not big. I don't think it's a dew fish. It's not doing much at all, really. Oh, what is it? It's a massive flounder. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen a flounder like that. Have a look at that guy. On the little snap bait. I've never seen a flounder like that. Allegedly, they're really good eating. Um, I'm gonna keep this guy because they're supposed to be really, really good eating. I think that's probably my first flounder I've caught offshore. I've caught a couple in the estuaries and stuff, but first one offshore, nice fish. Oh my God, fly fishing is just disaster. I don't even know why I'm doing this. It's just stupidity. All right, try to give this a little cast. Let's go. Oh, it sort of worked. I've got it out there anyway. It's out the back. It tied itself in loops and knots. I'll give that barely another touch. All right, I'll throw you out another tip while I'm here standing here. I'm already puffing and I'm... Um, consistency. You can't expect to get good at fishing if you're not consistent. You can't go once a month and expect that you're going to catch. You need to go more often. It's not easy. I know life is tough. Everyone's got commitments. Kids, sport, work, jobs around the house. We've all got stuff to do, but you just need to make the effort and try to be more consistent. Um, what today is a Friday afternoon after work and I'm out here. I saw a small window and I banged out. I'll only be out here for an hour or two and I'll be back in time for dinner. So. You just got to make it work however you can. Be consistent. Like any sport, the more you practice, the better you get. The more you're out here, the more you learn, the more you notice small details. 
small details. Hey, the current's running this way today. It was running that way yesterday. Hey, there's a lot of weed in the water today. That wasn't here yesterday. Um, oh, the water's murky today. It was clear yesterday. It's 25 degrees today. It was 18 yesterday. Small differences like that, you only notice by being consistent and being out here all the time. Um, I know it's easier said than done. We've all got lives. I've got a job too. I work full time, so but you got to do the best you can it's the only way you're going to get good at any sport is practice 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 and i feel like that might be getting down a little bit so i'm going to start twitching this back up now i'm just slowly twitching this i just want that fly to zoop 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 just work its way through the barely trail just going to look like a little bait fish just wafting its way through the barely any big predators are going to see that and hopefully come in and have a sniff and give it a tap hopefully drift that back up i can see that there now so now i'm just going to give it line and just let it walk back down again okay again i feel like my fly's got down a bit so i'm just going to slow twitch this back slow twitch it's pretty quiet on the old fly from the other if, yeah i don't know if i was a kid fish normally in schools and you hate that they'd be more around but could have been a lone soldier but, oh geez i am no fly fisherman all right i'm just going to retire the fly rod i've given it a good I've given it a good 20 minutes, I've wafted it in a few times, no love. I feel like if that was a kingfish before, it's not here anymore. I'd rather have a bait out there. I'll keep this off to one side, keep it handy. Put it in the side here. Um, if I think there's some, if some kingfish or something show up, I'll get that back out again. Um, and just be stupid again. Uh, I might throw a fillet out of this skippy out here. Well, I've got a little circle hook with a fillet of skippy on here. I'm going to heave this out. I feel like I've got more chance with a bait in the water than I did with the fly. Um, if I see some more pelagic fish show up, then I'll get the fly out. But for now, I think I'm better off with a bait in the water. I feel like I'm a better chance. Oh, look at that. That fillet of skippy's got smacked straight away. Look at that. I only just cast that out. What have we got this time? Oh, it's angry. It's shaking its head. Oh, it's a good fish. Hopefully I don't lose it this time. Last time it made it back to the reef. That edge of the reef is sort of just over behind me there. It made it back to the edge of that reef and it's just chafed me through on the leader. <laughs> Ironically enough, just after I was saying I was confident in my leaders and my bloody line, I only fish 30 pound leader on this because I feel like I get more hits with a lighter leaders. The downside is uh, you get more hits, but the downside is you also lose a few fish sometimes because they, if they get to the reef, you, oh, you don't have much insurance. This is a good fish. Yeah, it's solid. work on this thing I was just checking the bait on my um snap bait there and just put a new bait on when this one went it's going back over the other side again now pretty confident it's not a snapper by the way it's fighting if it is a snapper it's a real good one like probably a really good one Uh, I don't know so much. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, it's going straight for that reef edge again. Come away from there, please. I don't want you over there. No, I really don't want you over there, buddy. Oh, it's angry. It's shaking its head. It's like not in a good mood. It's coming back over this side again. Hang on, I'll just try to bring the camera with me. Oh, come up off the bottom. Yeah, solid fish, no doubt. You just gotta take your time. Although you wanted to start locking up the drag and getting heavy handed, you just can't. You gotta take your time, go slowly. I'm seeing some colour down there. What's that? I got him up off the bottom, which is a start. Oh, it's a good fish. I think it's a king. Yeah, it's a kingfish. Oh, I need to get my net. Here we go. Oh, I really didn't need to hook this on fly anyway. I was just being stupid. Yeah. There he is. Beautiful kingfish. He's a nice fish. Um, probably good eating size, but I'm gonna put this guy back while he's still fresh. Um, I've got that snapper I'm happy with, I've got that flounder, I'm pretty happy with that. This guy will swim off, he's still full of life, he'll go fine. He's bleeding a little bit, but I'm pretty sure he'll be fine once I put him back in the water. Here you go, buddy. Alright, let's get my fillet back down. Um, whew, I'm exhausted after that. There you go, snap bait. That's a 60 gram? Yeah, 60 gram snap bait. I'm just going to drop that down. I've actually got... I'll put that on the drop. Have a look at this. Some good marks right there. It's midwater. I don't know what that is. Could be a school of kings or something. I'll drop this snap bait down and it should go right past them on its way down. If they're hungry, they will probably slap it. I'm going to swap sides with it because I know the sun's a bit rude in the camera on that side. Oh, Scott, that's awkward around the outboard. All right, if you have a look at this, look. They've just followed it down, whatever they are, they're down there, have a look at my slap boat. Have a look at it. Um, I don't even think I'm gonna put this one back out again at the moment. I'm just gonna leave this one for now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Something's going on down there. All right, there's a lot of fish, a lot of fish on the sounder. Um, I feel like they might be kings. I'm going to get my stick bait out and see if I can scare them up to the surface. Um, if they're kings and they see this splashing around on top, I might be able to get a surface lead out of them, which would be pretty cool. Um, maybe, maybe not. They didn't want the fly, but this is probably a little bit more um, enticing to them as it splashes around on the surface. It might attract them up, it might not. So I'm watching this, and if they're kings, I'll see them on the sounder, I'll see them come up. I just want maximum splash out of this at the moment. Oh, wow, did you see that? Oh yeah, I'm in. Woo! <laughs> yeah, they're kings. <laughs> no way. Oh, that's a good fish, man. Oh, that's a big fish. Wow, how was that surface strike? <laughs> Nuts. Oh, I so hope the camera caught that. Wow. 
Well, that confirmed one thing, they're kingfish. <laughs> wow. Angry, angry, angry fish. I'm on 50 pound tackle here, so I've got a bit of pulling power on me now. I'm actually gonna try and wind this in with the other hand, because I don't want this, I don't want this being part of it. I feel like I've got a really good fish on here. And I don't want that to get tangled up with this. Particularly, I'm gonna move this right over here out of the way. Okay, let's go. Let's go to work on this guy. Wowzers. That was crazy, two casts. The first cast must have just brought him up and I saw him on the sounder, I saw him coming up and then on the second cast, he just whacked it. Oh, there's more of them down there too. I can see them, there's a whole school down there. Maybe I should have worked the fly a bit more aggressively. Oh no, it's a Samson fish. He's not even a king. Oh, what? No way. Wow. Oh, I'll skip down on the gym tonight. I'll skip down on the gym to come fishing, but oh, I'm getting my workout. I'm getting my workout, no problems at all. Look at him. <laughs> Old man Samson fish, he has just whacked that stick bait. Good fish. <sighs> all right, I'm gonna unhook him, get him back in. All right, this guy can go back. Off you go. He swam off strong. Yes, very strong biting fish, the Samson's. You never have any trouble releasing those. Oh, wow. I almost don't know what to do now. Oh, I've just dropped my snap bait down and it's got nailed on the way down. What have I got here? That was on the fall and it got slapped on the fall. It's probably another king or another Samson fish, judging by the way it's running. Oh, come out from under the boat there, buddy. Why do you always have to do that under the outboard and stuff? There's just no need for that. Uh, all right. Well, this is my new, uh, my new gem black. It's about time I've got a decent run on it. I've caught a few jewies on it, but jewies don't really run. This guy's got other ideas. I think I'm running out of battery in that back GoPro there. We'll see how long it lasts. Uh, I don't know what this is, but the fact that it got slapped on the way down says it's probably another one of those. One of the Seriola clan, a king or a Samson fish, I reckon. Oh, I'm buggered. Wow. This combination is so good. This new rod from Endorphin, this Endorphin jigging rod, it's got so much power for a PE3 outfit. So much power. And coupled with this new Gen Black I bought, it's actually a ripping little combination. Oh yeah, there's Samson fish. There's a whole heap of them down there. Can you see them down there? That's it for me. I'm not catching anything else now except for these guys. I can keep his head out. There you go. Little Sambo, he whacked that slap bait on the way down. He can go back again. They're not very good eating these guys, so he can go. I've already got that flounder, a snapper. I'm happy. I'm buggered. All right, as stated before, 
as I stated before, I'm not very smart, but I'm gonna throw this fly rod out. Why not? You only live once. Oh, there's a big tangle in the guides already. I'm gonna throw my fly down. Those Samson fish, there's still big marks on the sounder. There's still big marks there. Um, see if I can hook one on the fly. I said I was gonna do it before and I didn't, but they seem like they're a bit more fired up now. So see if I can get one on fly and then that'll be it. I'm out of here because I'm buggered. I got the fish I wanted. I've got him on ice in the um, esky at the back here. I'm happy. Now I'm just having fun. But if I can get back before the sun goes down, I'll be home in time for dinner and that's even better again. So, <sighs> Whew, I'm puffing. That last one on the stick bait on 50 pound, that really sorted me. Heavy boy. Oh yeah, they're there. See, look. See that? Just gotta let this fly get down a little bit. Once it gets down a bit, I'll twitch it. And there's a pretty high potential it's gonna get thwacked on the way up. I'm actually shitting myself because this is just stupidity. I don't even know why I'm doing this. All right, let's twitch it. Twitch it fast and I generally hit it. Nah, not that time. Oh, I think I can see him. I think it just got buzzed. It just got buzzed. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Oh, no, it dropped it. I just saw one come after it then. It was just slowly sinking it back and one came up and just thwacked it then. Am I in? Yeah, I'm in. Okay. Like I said, I'm not very smart. Be careful what you wish for. Because now I've hooked one on the fly rod. Which is probably a bit stupid. It's more than a bit stupid. It's really, really stupid. The one to one ratio. Fortunately, I don't think it's a big one. Oh, fortunately, I think I've hooked a smaller one, which is probably better for this situation at the moment. <laughs> because a big one on fly would be a real handful. Oh, it's not doing very much. What is it? It must be a real small one. Oh. oh, it's a snapper. Are you for real? <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to lift him. I don't want to lift him. I actually saw him come and hit that. Alright. There you go. A little pinky on fly. You can't ask for much more than that. Um, I can't do much more here tonight. He can go back. Off you pop. Uh, I'm kind of thankful that wasn't a Samson fish, to be honest. I just would have been a lot of hard work and a lot of huffing and puffing. Oh, look at them all. Well, well, that was a fun session. Um, I've had enough. I'm going to bail it now. The sun's still shining. I'm going to get out of here and um, I'll be home in time for dinner. Um, I've had good fun. I hope some of those tips help you out. Guys, just get out there. It's the biggest tip I can give you of everything. Just get out there. Get out as much as you can. The more you're out, the better your odds of catching are. You're not going to catch sitting at home on the couch. Get out there. Get on the water. Have some fun. If you like my videos, stay tuned and I'll see everyone in the next episode. Um, oh, I'm bugging. I need a bottle of water. Thanks everyone for watching. See you next time. You. So good to have this boat where I can stay in here, out of the wind, out of the spray. It's big, it's heavy, it punches through the chop with no worries at all. Very comfortable. Um, also, I've got to give a word out to the anchor, the boomer anchor. 
um, it's just been the most revolutionary thing I've ever had. In all my years of fishing, one thing, if one thing has changed my whole way of fish, it's been this boomeranka. You can just drop it anywhere, it never gets stuck. Um, if it does get stuck, the pin breaks and the boomeranka comes back. Check them out online, boomerankers.com. Well worth a look. Um, it's all stainless steel construction. You can't beat them. The best thing I've, it's the best anchor I've used for sure. And um, yeah, I've got 100% confidence in it. And I'm not just saying that, I'm not getting paid by Boomer. I actually believe it is the best anchor I've ever used. And I wish I had found out about them years ago. Anyway, I'm out of here. You.